What's up everybody and welcome to part 2 of my how to make a Minecraft Bedrock server tutorial. Uh, so in the last tutorial we went over downloading the server and port forwarding. And in this video we're going to go over uh, setting up the server. Alright, so to make this easier we're just going to drag the server file onto the desktop. And once that is done we're going to open up the file. And so there's a lot of uh, files and different folders in here. So the most important stuff is everything right here. So the first thing and probably the only thing you're really ever going to actually open is the server properties file. So it'll either say server dot properties here or it'll just say server and properties file over here. Uh, but either way, whatever it says here, it'll always say properties file over here if it's the right file. So you want to double click that. And this is the file that you get right here. So this may look a little bit confusing. So right here we have the server name. So that is used as the server name, allowed values, any string. So any string would be basically any number, letter, or character that is pretty much on the keyboard. So I'm going to name this server, uh, I don't know, tutorial server, I guess. There we go, tutorial server. Okay, so right here you've got the game mode setting. So game mode survival here. And this sets the game mode for new players. So uh, one thing you can do is you can delete these if you want to. So I'm just going to delete these. And it'll still work. So you can, you can just do this. And both of these will still work. So these are just there as descriptors of what the value above them is. So now there is the difficulty, which can be peaceful, easy, normal, or hard. And that would be the difficulty of the world. Okay, so now we got allow cheats. And you can set this to false or true. I'm going to set this to true. And then, again, you can delete these descriptors if you want. That is up to you. But I'm just going to delete those. You've got, now here you've got the max players. So... You can mess around with this if you're going to have just like two or three players ever joining the server. You can keep it at 10. If you're going to have more, you can up that. Uh, I generally just put it around 30 just in case I ever have a lot of people join the server. But most uh, computers probably cannot handle 30 people joining your server at once, uh, especially if you're playing it at the same time. So on my specific computer, problems sometimes start to arise if I am playing Minecraft at the same time on this computer. Uh, a while ago, a bunch of people got, basically everyone got disconnected and I had to restart the server. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to go with that as well. Okay, so I'm going to delete these descriptors here. Okay, so now there's the online mode. Uh, value here which is set to true and I would suggest setting it to true all the time so if this is set to true all connected players must be authenticated to Xbox Live if it is set to false then they do not have to be connected to Xbox Live although clients connecting it to remote non uh, local area network or LAN servers will be always will always be required to have Xbox Live authentication regardless of the setting. So if you're just going to be playing with family members or whatever and they don't have an Xbox Live account, you can disable that. But they have to have an Xbox Live account if they're on a different network than you. All right, so this is the whitelist value. If this is uh, false, then... Basically, anyone can join the server. If this is true, then only whitelisted people can join. 
the server. Okay, so this is the server port. So this is the port that you port forwarded, 19132. And uh, I would advise just keeping that the same. Uh, this is the server port v6, which is 19133. I would advise keeping that the same as well, although most people will not be using that. And I would also suggest port forwarding that if you would like to, although most people use 19132, so that's all I port forwarded. Okay, so now there's the view distance uh, value. So the view distance is the maximum number of chunks uh, that can be set as a character's view distance. So if you would like your distance view distance to be all the way up to 32, then do that. If you have like if you're playing on like a mobile device or something like that, and your maximum view distance is like 20 or something like that, then uh, you can set this to 20. It really depends on your personal preference and what you think is best for the server. Okay, so now this is the tick distance. This is uh, currently set to four, and I think that is perfectly okay. This is basically how many chunks the game will update away from any of the players that are in the game. I think uh, four is perfectly fine, although this can get all the way up to 12. But if you go uh, all the way up to 12, it can affect uh, the server performance. Okay, so now there's the player idle timeout. So this is good if you're just if you're trying to uh, make a server that's going to have a lot of people joining. Uh, but I generally just set it to zero so the players won't get timed out from being idle. Although if uh, there if you have problems with players being idle in your server, you might want to put that at like 30 minutes or an hour or something like that. Okay, so now this is max threads. So this is probably one of the more uh, advanced settings in here. So you want this variable to be, basically this determines how, many, how much resources the, the server uses on your computer. So if you're gonna be doing a bunch of other stuff on the computer, you might wanna keep the uh, max threads at like even like four or something. It really just depends on how many threads your CPU has. So I just keep this at zero because I don't usually do very much when the server is running. So if it's at zero, that means it will use as much uh, of the resources as it possibly can. Okay, so now level name. So this is the name of the actual world. So I'm just going to keep that at bedrock level. You can change that to whatever you want. Um, so when the server uh, creates a world, it is created in the world's file and it this is the name of it so if you want to change the world you can change this name and it will generate a world of that name or it will load the world that already has that name if there is a world with that name in it okay so now there is the level seed so as always you can put whatever you want in that it's any string so that would be again any letter or number basically any letter or number and uh, yeah so that's any string you can put that in it, or you can leave it blank for randomized uh, I tend to like it leaving it blank to randomize worlds so I usually just keep that blank and don't mess with it although if you are going to be having multiple worlds in your server um, you, you probably do actually want to keep it blank because uh, if you have a seed in there you have to change it when you uh, create a new world because it's used at every world generation. So default player permission level member. So this really depends on uh, what you would like to give permissions to everybody, uh, how, what you want the permissions to be. So I would like everybody who joins my server to be a member, be able to break blocks and get stuff and actually play the game. But if you're doing a server where you're just like showcasing a build that you have, you might want to put it on visitor or I don't know, you, you, may, you might even want to give everybody operator permissions. Okay, so the next value is the texture pack required value and I have that at false. So if you have a texture pack um, that basically you would 
sort of need to uh, for like a build or something like that to get the proper context so if it changes how an item looks completely then you might want this on true but I have that on false so any player can use any texture pack they want okay so the next uh, value here is the content log file enabled so this is also one of the more advanced uh, little settings here so if you want to do content uh, log files so if you want to log what's going on in the server and everything then you would want this set to true and it should create a log file and everything like that uh, so basically that is only required for de debugging and as it is with this server being very bare bones unless you have expertise in running a server there's no reason for you to even do anything with that. Okay, so this is the compression threshold equals one. This determines the smallest size of the raw network payload to compress. Um, so I just keep that at one. All right, so server authoritative movement true. This basically updates your character's movement to be um, the same as the server. So if there's a uh, difference in between the player movement and the server's movement it will be corrected so this can uh, cause some bugginess on the player side of things but it makes for a better PvP experience as uh, if you hit somebody it will more likely or mo most likely be updated on the, in the server properly Okay, so player of movement uh, distance threshold and a player movement duration threshold are all disabled if server authoritative movement is true. So we're not going to mess with those, although the descriptors do say kinda what they do. Okay, so now there's correct player movement. So if true, the client position will get corrected to the server position if the movement score exceeds the threshold. I would put this on true depending on uh, how things are going with the server and what the performance is like. But otherwise, I would just keep it on false if performance is just fine. So when you're all finished with this and you've got everything sort of customized to your liking, you can save it. And exit out so once you got that saved you're probably wondering how do I open up the server okay so to open the server we would double click the bedrock server application here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a shortcut so I'm going to right click it and I'm going to go to send it to and then I'm going to do desktop create shortcut and that has now created a shortcut right here okay so now that we've got that on the desktop I'm going to really quickly go over how to launch it if you are uh, watching this and you have Ubuntu okay so let's go to server how to real quick and in here you can see this is the command that you will run in the terminal to launch it on Ubuntu so what you want to do on Ubuntu is you want to right click the file first and then do open in terminal or you want to change directory or CD to the file before you input this command and that should start the server just like how it is on Windows okay so for Windows users you go if you're going to be playing Minecraft and your same computer that you are going to be hosting the server at the same time so if you can be playing on the server on your computer specifically you're going to want to copy and paste this code right here. So again, that is found in the Bedrock server how-to uh, file right here. So what you're going to want to do with that is go into the command prompt. And then you're going to want to paste that in there and click enter. It says access denied run command as administrator. Okay, so now what I'm going to do so I'm going to do the same thing go to uh, command prompt run as administrator and then copy and paste that in there and then click enter and then it should say okay right there 
and that is done. So once you've done that, you're fine to play the Bedrock server on your computer while the server is running. So now what we want to do is open the server. So again on Ubuntu, okay, so it says Windows protected here, uh, and it only says don't run here. So we're gonna click more info and then run anyway. Okay, so, and on Ubuntu again, that is um, LD underscore library underscore path and then equals uh, period space period slash bedrock underscore server I think is the command uh, but that's what you would enter into the command console on Linux to start the server so this pop-up here is going to show up Windows security alert uh, click allow access to public networks okay so now once you've got that started the first things you gonna, I'm going to show you here are some of the, the commands in the, the terminal that you might want to uh, know about. So the first command is the operator command to make someone an operator. So to do that, you're going to want to do op space, whoops, space. And then you want to do on the username like, uh, for example, my username is egg and donut. Whoops, the AND is all caps. <laughs> and donut. Egg and donut would be my username, so that would be the command for that. And then press enter. It says no targets matched the selector. Uh, and that is because I am not in the server right now. So uh, another command would be the D operator. So that gets rid of the uh, operator basically. It makes them a member again. And that would be used exactly the same way so I'll just put in my username here and then I press enter and then that should run the command now another really useful command to use is list and that shows how many players are in the server at the moment so currently there are zero out of 30 players online that second number would be whatever number you change the max players to in your properties file and now another cool thing to do is the say command so this is something that uh, isn't even in the um, the much of the documentation for the bedrock server although it is a command in the Java edition so I decided to try it out on this and that is say and then um, maybe type in hello world and then that would actually say hello world as in the, in the game as server hello world. So that is uh, pretty uh, good there for if you're going to be like shutting down the server in an hour. And you want to make sure you get people to uh, know that who are on the server. Okay, so now that you've got the server created, you're probably wondering how do I figure out if the server is actually working. So the first thing you could do is join it on your computer to figure out if it is working. Um, and that should go straight forward. If it's actually on, it should work no matter what. And then the next thing to do is uh, figure out if you port forwarded correctly. So the easiest way to do that is if you've got Minecraft on a phone, uh, I usually turn off Wi-Fi and go onto cellular and then try to join it from there. Or if you have a computer that has access to a different network, you would want to try to join on that network or get a friend to try and join it from a different network. All right, hope you all like this video and I'll see you all in the next video.